The declaration of the Lord when you're speaking in confidence is what brings the prayer to pass. Right in the midst of your trial, right in the midst of lack, is where God wants to move. He wants to bring forth in such an enormous blessing so that the only one that gets the praise through it all is Jesus and no man. The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar, the jar of oil run dry until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. And so she, so she went away and she did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days, many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor was the jar of oil. It did not run dry according to the word of Elijah that was spoken. Amen. 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 This man of God heard a word of God. He heard the word of the Lord. And when he heard the word of the Lord, he knew the avenue to bring this word of the Lord to pass is in coming into agreement with what God has already spoken. Go back to verse, go back to verse 14. In verse 14, Elijah made a declaration. He didn't ask for the will of God to come about. He spoke the will of God to come about. He already had the word of the Lord. He had the word of the Lord. He just needed to speak it forth in a form of a declaration because God's word never returns void. For thus saith the Lord, verse 14, the bin of flour shall not be used up. It shall not be used up. Elijah, you're pretty bold. What if they die? The bin of flour shall not be used up. At the word of the Lord, he can speak with confidence, and so can you. The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the Lord sends rain on the earth. There is a declaration that is to be spoken out of your mouths that is in agreement with what the word of God has already spoken to you, that they shall not die, but they shall live, and they shall decree the glory of God, the works of the Lord. The declaration of the Lord when you speak it in confidence is what brings the prayer to pass. As we speak God's word in confidence, in truth, yeah. you are being an ambassador that literally brings heaven to earth and it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass. Don't let the enemy win. Don't let him have his way. It's time sometimes to push back, and the way you push back is by making sure your declaration is loud, strong, and based on the word of truth that never returns unto us void. Right? This is what he said. Now, he could have went and said, well, I'm going to pray for you, and let's just come in agreement together that what God said was going to come to pass. That's not what he said. Because there's doubt in that. We don't want doubt. Doubt gives room for the enemy to play. And we're going to slam the door shut to the enemy. When God speaks to you a sure word, you need to surely speak it out. You need to surely speak it out. It's a sure word. God speaks it to you. Why are you still asking? Why are you needing a confirmation or an agreement or you need two people? No, the two people is you and the Holy Spirit. Speak it out. Declare the word. Declare what God has already said. That as for you and your household, they shall be saved, delivered, set apart, turned around, serving Jesus. Speak it out. Don't let the devil fill your mouth with worry. And don't let him shortchange your praise. And don't let him shortchange your prayer. Because that's what happens sometimes. We let him shortchange our prayer. Because people get into the mode of proper Christianity. Well, I want to pray proper, and I want to pray, and I don't want to sound radical, and I, want to, I don't want to be presumptuous. Well, there is, a, there is truth in not being presumptuous, but you're not being presumptuous when God has already spoken something to you, and it's backed up by his word. You're not being presumptuous when you take it by faith, and you speak it out boldly, loudly, clearly. Amen. Right? For each and every one of us. So we're going to stand on the promises of God. We're going to use our authority. And we're not going to let anything that the enemy tries to bring our way to squelch our praise, squelch our prayer. Elijah didn't, did he? So he makes this very bold declaration. And he makes this bold declaration because the Lord already told him, I'm going to provide for you through this widow. Okay? The, the ravens stopped bringing bread. They, they stopped bringing meat. 
They did so consistently because at the command of the Lord. But he says, it's enough. The miracle now is over here. And I want you to see that even though it seems empty, in other words, she was poor. In other words, even though it looks impossible, there was no money flowing in. She was a widow. There was nothing in the natural that could have seemed like it was going to be helpful, helpful for anybody. But yet God said to him, go there where it seems the least likely for the Lord to move and watch me move. Some of you need to realize right in the midst of your trial, right in the midst of lack is where God wants to move he wants to bring forth in such an enormous blessing so that the only one that gets the praise through it all is Jesus and no man. No situation. It's not because you move from here to there that you receive the blessing. It's because you stayed right where God called you to stay in the midst of the drought. And you watched God move on your behalf. But you decreed what God has already spoken to you. You didn't sit there and sit back and wait for the, for, to see a little glimpse before you spoke it. You decreed it because you heard it. You heard it in prayer. You heard it in, in your spirit, man. So you decree it. Right? This is what Elijah did. And this is what we're called to do. Glory to God. Let's go back to verse 9. Because he said, arise. This is what the Lord said to him. Arise and go to Zarephath. So I looked up the word Zarephath. It means a smelting place. It means, a, 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 a Zarephath means smelting. So to extract metal from its ore by a process of involving heat and melting. In other words, to be refined. In other words, he said, arise and go to the refinery, which belongs to Sidon. And there, and there, see, I have commanded a widow to provide for you. I've commanded the impossible to come forth and bring you provision. But I want you to go to the place of the refinery. And in the place of the refinery is where your blessing will arise. Makes absolutely no logical sense. It's God. Say it's God. And we're going to believe because it's supernatural. And we don't care about logic when God says, I'm supernatural. I just want you to believe in faith. Just believe in faith. That when God says something, he brings it to pass, right? Some of you are in a season right now where it's like, I don't know how this is going to turn around. I have no idea how this is going to turn around. Because there's nothing in the natural that seems like it's going to, to help. But yet, you know, she's speaking from a, from a pulpit that this is a season of double blessing. That the doors of opportunity that God has already spoken for our church. And for those that are in agreement, those that come and they're, yeah, we, we love this place. There is a yes, there is a double door of blessing. God says it's time to celebrate. I told you this the last two services because this is what he is saying to us. It's time to celebrate. And some of you are saying, I'm, I'm going to choose to celebrate. But I'm also trusting God because there is absolutely no provision coming in in the natural. But we are going to call down through the vehicle of declarations that the will of God, which is to bless you, he does want to bless you. Amen. The blessing of the Lord, it makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. This is what the word of the Lord says. So we speak forth that word. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. He's making you rich, and it's the blessing of God that's making you rich, and he's not adding sorrow to your life. He's not adding sorrow to your life. You may be experiencing sorrow, but God is not adding sorrow to your life. He says, I want you to keep your eyes on the blessing. I want you to keep your eyes on the provision. I want you to keep your eyes on the provider. Even though you might be in a land in a season of refining, being refined by the fire, that's okay. Because if you keep your eyes on me, if you keep your eyes uh, my provision is going to come forth from the most least likely place. From a widow that could barely provide for herself. Right? This is, what, this is what he's saying. So let our lives be like that gold that's being refined in the fire. You can turn to 1 Peter 1.7. 1 Peter 1.7. So that the tested genuineness of your faith. Ah, uh, the tested genuineness of your faith. Uh, you know what? Only when you've gone through the fire a few times, <laughs> a lot of, many times, <laughs> can you say with joy in your heart, 
the genuineness of your faith, the tested genuineness of your faith, being much more precious uh, than gold. It's more precious than gold. That perishes, right? Though it is tested by fire. Lord, I thank you for the testing by fire because we're coming out as pure gold. We've come out as pure gold. We continue to come out as pure gold that we may be found to praise, glory, and honor our Lord Jesus Christ. And when your mouth speaks of praise without a thought, when, you've, when you have programmed yourself, because we are to let the word program us, right? In other words, we're, we're to let the word of God, you know, fill our minds continually every single day, right? Filling us with the truth of God's word continually. Every day. So when we now operate from a position of, I just praise you, Lord God, and it's not something you think about. It just naturally comes out, even in the midst of a hard time. You know that what you're doing is you're allowing the word of God to really saturate you and to really cause you to rise up and be that strong warrior that no matter what, you're going to praise him because you're going to trust him. Because you've seen his hand at work, right? You've seen it over and over and over. And you know that my God can't do anything but give me good. You know, he, he's not a man that he should lie, right? He's not a man. So if he's spoken it, and we know the blessings of God, they make us rich, the blessings of God, they make us rich. So if you're not seeing it right now and you're seeing the opposite, hang on because help is on its way. Hang on. The deliverer is still, he is, he's working it out in your life. You just need to hold on to the promise. The promise is. And say, wow, Lord, if you could provide for this man of faith, Elijah, you sent him to a place that's considered a refinery a place where you're being refined, a place where you're being pruned, a place where you're being stripped, a place where you're being cut, things are being cut, things are being removed. But yet God says, I'm going to provide for you right where it seems to be the worst. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, Deuteronomy 4.24 says, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire. He's a jealous God. He's so jealous over us. He's a consuming fire. And so, Lord God, whatever it is that needs to be consumed, whatever it is in our lives that needs to be consumed, let it be consumed. Because, Lord, we just, wanna, we just want the fragrance that rises up out of us, Lord, to bring you all the glory and the praise. We just want our lives to be that, that individual combined with corporate people that are just giving you praise, a fragrant offering. That's what we desire, a fragrant offering, Lord, that our lives are set apart to give you glory. Our lives are set apart to give you the praise and the honor that is due your name, Lord, no matter what, no matter what, let your consuming fire consume in us everything that is not of you because you are a jealous God and you're not going to leave us alone. We call, we're called by your name. We're called by his name, Christian, Christ-like. You belong to Jesus. You're a Christian. You carry his name. You're called by his name. It gives you a new name. So, Lord, whatever needs to go, let it go. Because we're going through double doors of blessing. We're going to rejoice and celebrate. And we don't want anything that's it weighing us down, dragging us back. We don't want any of that. For our minds are daily renewed in the word of God. And as our minds are daily renewed by the word, in the word, through the word, then therefore all that's going to come out of our mouths when we're squeezed, when we're in the refinery, is praise the Lord, oh my soul. That's what's going to come out of our mouths no matter what. Is that true for you? Yes, yes, amen. Amen out of the mouths of babes. Woo, glory to God. You know what the enemy meant for evil. God works it for good. Every single thing that the enemy tried to, he meant it for evil. But God, but God, he's working it all for good. Genesis 45, 7 and 8. And God sent me before you. Hmm. God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save lives. To save lives, he sent you ahead. 
He sent, he saved, to save lives, he sent you ahead by a great deliverer. So now, says Joseph, as he revealed his identity to his brothers, it was not you who sent me here. You can all get off your high horse because it was not you that sent me here. You thought you, were, you really thought you were that big? Do you really think you were that big? Did you really think you could be above the hand of God in my life? Did you really think that? Of course, that's not, this is my, I'm adding that in, you know, you know, but, but I want to make it plain so that you can apply it to your lives. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of all of his house as a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. You didn't send me here. You thought you sent me here. You thought you did away with me. You thought you crushed. You thought you removed. You thought you did. But it was actually God that was moving me, moving me along so that I could be positioned in a place where I would have, would have value, seniority, authority, without their influence. And that's what he's doing for you as well. That's what he's doing for you as well. If you can keep your eyes on the Lord throughout the whole time. If you can make sure your heart stays free of offense, and the minute there is an offense, you deal with it. Get rid of it. It's not that it's never going to come in. You just don't want it to dwell and stay there. If you could keep your heart right, God's blessings for you are beyond anything that we could really even imagine. And this is the word of the Lord. So it was the Lord that has sent me ahead of you, what's the point? Why, Joseph? To save lives. Because there are lives that are watching. There are lives that know your story. There are people that know. And there are people that will be so transformed because of your testimony of dependency, of surrender, even while you were mocked, treated as if why and where, where's your God now? And this seems pretty ridiculous. Where's your provider now? Where's your healer now? Why is this happening to you since you love him so much? All of those kinds of comments. They're watching your lives. God is sending you ahead. And it's to save lives. It's to save lives. Because this is not about us. It's not about our life specifically and individually. It is about the kingdom. And it is about us recognizing our weight in the spirit. Do you know your weight in the spirit? Do you know what you carry in the spirit? The more that you allow God to move through you in the desperate times, and the more that you rise up, staying at your position in those hard, difficult times, and you will not shut your mouth and you will not allow your mouth to grumble, your heart to grumble. Instead, you just say, oh, Abba, I will give you praise. Oh, I will give you praise. And every one of them shall see the glory of God. I speak it forth and it is established. You make declarations according to the word of God. And I'll tell you, as you do that, literally, strongholds are broken off. Strongholds are broken off because there is something about the sound that is anointed. An anointed sound, it doesn't only mean singing. Anointed sound, the sound that comes forth, the lioness, the roar, the lion, the lioness, right? The roar that comes forth, that literally breaks chains, right? And so, so, so therefore, we're, yeah, let the lion roar. Exactly. Let the lion roar. Amen. We're letting the lion roar. So he says, bring me some water, and while you're at it, go ahead and make me a cake. Now, I don't have anything to make. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. We're going to die. We're eating our last meal, and we're going to die. He says, no, don't fear. Do what I tell you to do. Make me a cake first, then afterwards you can make one for yourself and for your son. And I decree over you that your oil is never going to run out. I decree over you your flour is never going to run out. And she received it. It wasn't that it was just spoken. She received it. There is a giving and then there is a receiving end of this. When you speak it, you need to speak it with bold, confident faith. But if the individual is in the room when you speak it and they receive it, it is a sure thing. What if they're not in the room? 
doesn't matter. Can your faith not rise up above that mountain? You may just have to say it a few more times. You may just have to stay at that position a few more times. And you may need to continue to decree it a few more times. But it shall come to pass. Because you are in agreement with the Holy Spirit. And there is no one better. There is no one better. No one stronger. When you're in agreement with the word and you let your declaration come forth, you're in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Can anybody outdo the Lord? Absolutely not. And we know, we know the story. The flour never ran out. The oil, the jar of oil never ran dry. It says until. So she went her way, verse 15. She did according to the word of Elijah. She and her, and, and her son and Elijah, they ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor was the jar of oil. According to the word of the Lord of which he had Spoken. Her obedience brought forth the blessing. She was blessed. Her son was blessed because of obedience, who God connected her with. He, she was obedient to. She respected and honored what he said, even though in her natural mind it probably made no sense. But yet she didn't let that speak to her. She didn't let that be what drove her and made her decisions. But she instead said, okay, I trust trust the spirit of the lord kicked in on the inside and said yes that's what happens sometimes you see in your natural mind this doesn't make any sense but the spirit of the lord rises up on the inside that's why in the orig originally first the first scripture that we read the lord said arise to elijah Somebody needs to arise in the spiritual realm in order for you to speak a word that's going to cause somebody else to arise. So first, Elijah, he rose because the Lord said, arise and go to the impossible. Arise and go to where it doesn't seem like it could ever turn out, but arise. And he did it. And therefore, she, in her own, in her state, in her condition of poverty was able to rise up and receive the word that was spoken. And then she could receive the blessing. Receive the word that's spoken and then receive your blessing. Obedience unto whom God has connected you to will cause you to walk in the blessing. And she received it all right. Because you are more than a conqueror, church of God. The enemy's defeated. You're a royal son or daughter of the most high God. That's who we are. That's who we are. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, Amplified Version. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and every earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Every need is met in Christ. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient is what the Lord says. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Yes and amen. Greater is the Lord in you, church. Greater. The greater one lives on the inside of you. Greater is the Lord in you than the enemy that roams around on the earth. The lying schemes that he throws your way. The situations, you might say, but they're not really lies. They're true. They're lies. They're lies if they don't come get into agreement with the word of God. They're lies. If it doesn't line up, if your current situation isn't lining up with the blessing of God, then we just decree that thing to be a lie overturned and under our feet. It is only the will of God that we're going to come into agreement with. And we're going to speak forth, call it forth, and bring it down. Amen. We're bringing it down because this is what we've been instructed to do in the word of God. Amen. How many of you guys are doing this, and how many are going to continue to do this? You're going to continue to make your declarations loud and strong. What God has spoken, you're going to shout out from the rooftops. And if you're in a place where, wow, you've been doing it, and you're tired, you're discouraged, you call somebody, and you say, you know what? I need some prayer backup right now. And, you know, and this is how it works in the kingdom. So when one's down, you pick up another, right? One puts a flight, a thousand, two, ten thousand. So get, get yourself with those that are filled with faith and make your declarations long and loud and proud with the Lord. Amen, because he is the one that's bringing it to pass. Amen. Glory, glory. 
We thank you, Lord God, for your provision is perfect. We thank you, Lord God, that you said in your word, Lord God, we would not even need, Lord God. We wouldn't have to worry about it, Lord God. We wouldn't have to wonder how it's going to come about. We just keep our eyes fixed and focused on the author and the perfecter of our faith. We thank you, Lord God. I'm going to have you all stand. Let's go ahead and stand right now. I want you to start praying in the spirit as we pray. Father, I thank you wherever there, is, there are needs in this congregation, Lord God, even those that are of our online congregation, wherever there are physical needs, Lord God, financial needs, Lord God, uh, healing that is needed in their bodies or restoration in their families, Lord God. Father, whatever the need might be, jobs, Lord God, pay raises, whatever the needs might be, Lord God. Father, I thank you for restoration. I thank you for reconciling marriages. I thank you for bringing forth, Lord God, Lord, every good and perfect gift, Lord God, which comes down from the Father of heavenly lights. I I thank you, Father God. Lord, you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, Lord God. And Lord Jesus has already spoken all authority is ours. Father, I thank you that we have authority, Lord, to trample on snakes and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. So we decree it over us right now. We decree it over ourselves right now that every weapon that's formed against us shall not prosper. Not one weapon that's been formed shall prosper. Instead, we're going to take it down. We strike that thing down. We rebuke that thing. And we speak the blessing. And we speak it. We declare we declare decree and declare that God's blessing overwhelms us. We decree it over ourselves right now. Father, the blessing of the Lord. You said the blessing of the Lord makes us rich. You said you add no sorrow to it. So I thank you, Lord God, for the blessing. I thank you the blessing, Lord God, is overwhelming us in every area. It extends to those that are connected to us. This blessing was not just for the widow woman. The blessing was for her son. The blessing lasted until the drought was over. She always had enough. There was provision until the drought was over. God is able to sustain you in the midst of the drought. God is able to sustain you no matter what the situation looks like. He is your sustaining fire. He gives you fire in the midst of lack. He gives you abundance in the midst of, uh, in the, midst of the enemy's schemes. Do you believe it? Are we going to receive it? The oil and the flour did not dry up. It didn't run out. It didn't run out for three and a half years. Think about that. Three and a half years, miracle after miracle. Every time she went to that bin, every time she went to that jug, every single time she went to go make that next, that next meal, the provision was there. It's like every time they went out to go receive the manna, it was there. Every morning they went, it was there. And at the word of the Lord, there was a double portion so that they could have their Sabbath. The word of God will never return void. And when the drought was over, the rains fell. And when the rains fell, the provision still continued. Because now, in the natural, it was so. But when it's not so, in the natural. Trust that the God who answers by fire, the God who sends the rain at the right time is for you and not against you. Amen. Give God the glory. Hallelujah.